This is You've Already Been Hacked, recorded on 16 October 2021. Alrighty, everybody, I'm back, and uh, we're going we're gonna to skip the news uh, this week, and we'll get caught up closer towards the end of the month on all the current nightmares du jour and Cyrum. This week, though, uh, because I brought it up in social media last week, I want to talk about burnout in the cybersecurity field. Burnout uh, at large has become so widespread that it is now uh, considered an official medical diagnosis. The World Health Organization lists the symptoms of burnout as feeling of energy depletion and exhaustion, increased mental distance from one's job or feelings of negativism or cynicism related to one's job, and reduced professional efficiency. Uh, Truth be told, like uh, I said in uh, in my social media posts last week, all of that is definitely kind of where I feel. Now, it, you mitigate it, you live with it, you, you move on from it, and, you know, here we are. We're recording again, so this is great, right? We're, we're back on the saddle, as it were. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. In cybersecurity, burnout is real. And due to the convergence of uh, so many factors, it's really prevalent more today than uh, than ever in the field. Things like um, the explosion of the digital supply chain organizations that have more potential points of entry to their networks. So that surface area, that attack surface is just exponentially larger than it's ever been, right? Um, cyber attacks and data breaches, well, that's what this whole podcast is generally about. And there are more every week than what I can possibly cover in just 15 or 20 minutes. The new regulations are coming out all the time uh, now, and definitely really at speed, um, many times uh, either made based on political interest or based on uh, uh, out-of-date technology and standards that it's hard to uh, fit a square peg into a round hole. And even though most of us in the cybersecurity field are affectionately, in the positive sense, of geeks... Um, The new tools that come out that are supposed to make all of this easier, more consumable, uh, faster for us to understand, um, is also a burden uh, and can contribute to alert fatigue and just more work on the backs of, of our cyber warriors. Let's throw on top of that stress bucket the entire skill shortage in IT and cybersecurity jobs. So let's um, let's talk a little bit about the percentages that some studies have come out with with regard to how how bad is burnout really uh, in the tech industry and, and in cybersecurity. Well, um, at large, right, not just cyber, but across the U.S., according to a Deloitte study, uh, the Workplace Burnout Survey, 77% of U.S. corporate employees have experienced burnout at some point in their careers. Uh, While not an American phenomenon, it's something that we Americans do quite well, is we work ourselves to death. We we always have to feel like we're on the move. We're always trying to be competitive. We're always trying to to make ourselves uh, more competitive individually for the next job or for the raise or for the thing or whatever, right? We, we're, we push, 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 go, go, go. And uh, uh, that that pace can only be kept so long by by so many, and then uh, you know the wick uh, the wick burns out a little bit. Uh, let's see, fifty seven percent of workers in the tech industry, so only twenty percent less than overall industry at large, are currently suffering from burnout. That number comes from um, a survey that was about eleven thousand plus employees from the tech industry. Uh, through a social media service called Blind. Now, I didn't know about Blind until I started doing uh, some of the background research for tonight. Blind is an anonymous social network for tech workers. It's a little more than just tech workers, but the fact that there's anonymity in a social network is kind of interesting. Uh, you may want to go check it out if that's if that's your jam. The most 
burnout prone firms on the list that was part of this uh, this survey had numbers higher than 70% in the tech industry that were experiencing burnout. Some more numbers. 65% of SOC professionals say stress has caused them to think about quitting. Um, SOCs are wildly important to the current dynamic and, and the way we, we shape our cybersecurity efforts. And it's difficult enough to find skilled workers to fully staff a SOC. Um, and yet the turnover rate is exceptionally high. So we have to ask ourselves, what, what are we doing wrong there that's burning out those, those highly skilled, needed workers? Um, we have to figure out a better way to, to manage those type of operation centers. And I don't mean manage from a leadership perspective. I mean manage the actual workload and what people have to do in order to meet the need of defending the network they're responsible for. So with all that, what's the state of the cybersecurity industry, right? What are we talking about here? Well, a study done by Symantec found that 64% have considered quitting their jobs and 63% have thought about leaving the industry entirely uh, with regard to cybersecurity professionals. That to me, um, and uh, forget, forgive the, on the nose of uh, 2021 and what we're actually living through at large, is, is an epi uh, epidemic of fatigue and overwork in the cybersecurity industry. In that study, there were multiple things that were talked about um, and others that I'll throw together here uh, about what, what are those contributing factors? What, what is leading people to, to this level of burnout and to just wanting to walk away for some, from something that they had an absolute passion for, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten into it in the first place. Well, let's talk about those. Overwork. Uh, in the semantic study, uh, 37% of the cybersecurity professionals that were, were uh, interviewed for the study, uh, their teams uh, and uh, those related to them said they could simply not manage the scale of their current workload. They have to wear so many different hats that it's nearly impossible to keep up. And quite honestly, the bad guys have the upper hand, right? Uh, hacking is cheap. But many hacking groups nowadays have uh, huge resources that are backing them because of how valuable the data is uh, and how it that, that value continues to rise. And organized crime groups, and let's not forget those that are well-funded in the sense of state-sponsored hacking, uh, are, are proliferating. It's everywhere. And a small team that's usually not funded to the level it needs to be uh, is responsible for defending against all of that. What else could be the cause? Well, the widening skill gap. Uh, at its core, cybersecurity is a constant battle between defender and attacker, uh, mouse and mousetrap, if you will, uh, and, and the bad guys, like I said, I, I believe that they have the upper hand. Um, according to an ISSA ESG survey that is now just a couple of years old, 94% of cybersecurity professionals believe the balance of power is tipped towards the cyber criminals for all sorts of reasons. The semantic study by relation found that 46% of cyber professionals and their teams are too busy to keep up with the necessary skills development they need. And 45% of them said that technological change is happening too quickly for them to adopt effectively. These, these are all compounding issues, not even at the team level, but for an individual that, that leads them just to, to burnout. Uh, that same study from the ISSA uh, discussed the volume of cyber attacks, and it discovered that 48% of the respondents experienced at least one major security incident in the past year. The incidents caused disruptions of normal business operations, uh, corruption and exposure of sensitive data, and severe loss in productivity. And with so much riding on the cybersecurity team to get it right, uh, basically to be perfect 100% of the time, uh, that's a level of stress that's not sustainable. It simply isn't for anyone. And anyone that says it is, um, please, 
why don't we have a longer interview like discussion? Because I would love to talk to you because I, I don't know that I would believe you in your stance right now. Uh, for many, another compounding factor that leads towards burnout is an ill-defined career path. It's, very, it's a very common sentiment inside the cybersecurity professional community and industry uh, that there, there's no real A equals B equals C in the career path structure as you mature in your expertise and in your, your particular part of the field. Um, due to the high levels of turnover, many newcomers uh, want uh, the want they have for a proper mentor isn't there. And, and because of that, they don't know which way they, they should be heading. Uh, the department that they work for is often more separated from the rest of the IT department or even the rest of the company in, in many instances, not in all these days. And, and that level of isolation is, uh, has a disproportionate uh, impact of minor mistakes that can fester into making their environment far more toxic. And while we're on the topic of career path, 91% of CISOs, so the, at the top end of the, the cybersecurity path, right? Let's call it the CISO. 91% say they suffer from moderate or high stress. So CISOs and other cybersecurity executives face the combined stressors of the day-to-day -day security for their businesses and their networks, as well as any other business concern that comes with being a member of the C-suite. and more than nine out of 10 CISOs, uh, as I said, are stressed beyond, almost to a breaking point of it. Uh, the, that same survey that this comes from, and this is from uh, Nominet, 27.5% uh, of CISOs said that stress affects their ability to do their jobs uh, effectively. And that should raise another organizational concern uh, about IT burnout and cybersecurity burnout, that the stress in these departments could actually be increasing your cyber risk to your company. If your professionals, if your experts, if your SMEs, if your leaders are so overstressed they can't think straight, they're not going to see the problems they need to see or have the creative solutions you need them to have day in and day out to keep your information secure. 63% of organizations are experiencing a shortage of IT staff that are specifically dedicated to cybersecurity. And this comes out of a, a study from I, uh, IS, uh, ISC2, uh, where it was nearly 60% of global organizations uh, were stating that their companies are at moderate or extreme risk of cyber attacks due to the skill shortages they're facing. So why should the employer care about uh, burnout in the IT industry? Well, if all the workers leave these positions due to stress, the employer might not actually be able to replace them. Uh, the skill shortage is acute, and filling job roles has been uh, a maddening experience of late because we need more and more highly skilled people with more and more expertise, and there just aren't enough of them to go around. So let's talk about how, uh, how can we collectively and individually reduce burnout in cybersecurity? Well, <clears throat> let's start with something tried and true, and let's improve working conditions. Let's focus a little bit more on employee well-being and improving the work conditions uh, that they have. That should be an easy goal to reach. Some methods of being able to reduce stress is uh, offering increased paid time off, flexible work from home schedules, and employee wellness programs uh, that encourage exercise and, and healthy diet habits. Are, they're all excellent measures that we can start with. But not just having these programs, right? That's the important thing. Having them is step one. Ensuring that your people know that they should be and are able to use them is number two. And if they feel like they don't have any backup, if they feel like they're one deep, it doesn't matter how many programs you have or how much leave you have them to offer. They're never going to use them. And it's just going to compound. That actually will compound the stress more because they know they have all this stuff out there and they can't access it. This is a real problem. 
thing that we could do is align the business and cybersecurity goals of an organization. A common feeling among many cyber professionals is there's a separation from the normal business operations. And it's as if they are firefighters within the company only called upon when there's a fire. They are not there and they are not part of the normal team. That needs to change. Add your cybersecurity team to various strategic teams and encourage their input. Uh, this will help all the goals of the company come into alignment, their cyber, your cybersecurity goals and your business operation goals. And it will demonstrate the increased value that cybersecurity has as being part of the regular team. One other thing you can do collectively is reduce complexity. Something that will actually help the cybersecurity team improve their ability to perform their duties and make their jobs easier. And we're not just talking about tools and processes. Your team is in the best position to tell you what it needs to help be more efficient. Listen to them. They're the ones that are doing the work. Help them do it better. They will help you by telling you what they need. So that's what we can do corporately. What can we do individually? Well, first, identify the causes of your burnout. Uh, not everyone working in the field is completely overwhelmed by the same things. And as humans, we act, we think, and we feel differently. And you need to kind of be, as you know, take it for what it's worth. You got to be in touch with, with you. You have to figure yourself out and what is, is driving you up a wall and what's wearing you down. Um, perhaps in some examples, you've been going through a long period of high workload and, and maybe you just don't have enough autonomy to make decisions that would benefit the organization. Uh, maybe you don't feel appreciated by the management team. Uh, it could be any number of things, but you got to figure that out and you have to you ha you can't fix it alone, right? You, you have to bring this up in a constructive manner. Um, you, you have to address it. You just can't keep digging in. With not just keeping on and keeping on, compare what your internal motivations are and the reality of the workplace that you're at. Um, it's not something that happens strictly in cybersecurity, but it's something that's very common for everybody. And it's to see uh, how the passion that made you choose this area of your expertise uh, was once there and, and maybe is not there anymore. Uh, perhaps you chose cybersecurity thinking about the tough battles you would be fighting against hackers, and you didn't really realize uh, what that meant from a workload perspective when you signed up for all the work. Um, if you are feeling overwhelmed, you got to take a pause. Give yourself enough time to think and analyze what made you choose to do this profession in the first place and what you're really doing now. And what's the what's the delta between that? You know, are are you doing what you wanted to do? Uh some questions to uh, help you here may be uh, not exhaustive, of course. Uh are your organization's missions, visions and values aligned with the way you are uh, with your way of thinking and acting. Do you believe in what the company believes in? Right? Do you believe in what your organization actually believes in? Are the objectives aligned with their mission? Are, are what they are saying actually what in the direction that they're going? Right? How well does your work align with the security objectives that they have laid out? Are you, are you helping? Are you spinning wheels based on what, what's going on? And lastly, uh, for the questions anyway, do you care about the organization? Does it matter to you anymore? Did it ever? Something to ask yourself. The third major area where you as an individual um, can help and this is also an organizational thing, but, but there's a little bit of in, uh, individual need on this too, is spend time educating the other parts of the workforce. We all know that the human is the weakest part of the cybersecurity chain, um, and it might be the main cause of your burnout. Uh, you're probably exhausted from fighting the consequences of 
people opening up phishing emails or bringing in USB keys from conferences and plugging them into computers or, 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 or pick whatever you like. The sad truth is, even uh, though people know this, they keep making the same mistakes, and that is a place where your frustration probably grows. Uh, a great way to ease the situation is by creating a cybersecurity training plan that will teach every member of your organization how to use the internet and technology safely. And more than probably what your company is doing now, right? This is really more of a, a mentoring type of thing on your part. Help people understand the why, and not just because it's important to protect the company's data, how, how their actions have real impact. Don't forget, at this point, we have, was it four, possibly five generations in the workplace? Everyone's cyber hygiene and education is going to be vastly different. So if you can, if you can set up a minimum level that is kind of like a knowledge leveling, you may end up doing far more good than not. And, and helping people that way may also help you. And that may take some of, some of that off, or it may give you something back that you may have lost. And finally, one of the hardest things for um, many people to do, talk to your managers about some more scheduled flexibility. In general, cyber security and cyber uh, work roles are, are in a field that doesn't really stick to a, a standard work schedule. There are many cases where it does, but there are plenty of times where the, the attacker is not going to wait for your 9 to 5. Um, they work around the clock to find the f vulnerabilities and the holes in networks and systems to gain access. And as a cybersecurity expert, you're going to have to be there when stuff is going down. Um, it's alluring, at least at first, the extra money you're going to make from that, right? All the overtime, uh, but then there's all the overtime and that can burn you out just in itself. So talk to your managers about uh, seeing what type of flexible schedule you can actually set up that will give you some more of a work-life balance without risking your organization's security. Uh, help, uh, you know, maybe even help them by coming up with the plan that you drafted up before you go talk to them and suggest how you'll handle that flexibility and what it means and how you can fulfill the tasks required of you, um, even though you may not be doing a standard Monday through Friday sort of thing. Not every manager is going to bite off on this. Some will. Maybe some will actually have a real conversation with you and figure out some middle ground. And when you find yourself struggling to do the work or start feeling demotivated, please take the time to think about things and talk about it with someone else. Uh, either someone in your well-being services, if your company has something like that, a specialist, or your, your colleagues, your teammates. Don't let it grow. It's easier to take an action and remedy this exhaustion when the first signs of it first start to appear uh, rather than well into that burnout. Now, where does this leave me? Um, there's a lot of truth in all of this that, that hit me as I read it from where I feel. Um, and there's a lot of uh, internal self reflection that the professor has to do on a lot of things. And I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's all for this week. I'm your professor of cyber risk and we'll talk again soon. If you like this podcast, share it with your colleagues and friends. Your support is how we are able to continue to make this content. Thank you.